What's something worth paying extra for? Always went by this. Paid three grand for a mattress and it was like sleeping on a cloud. Used it for ten years of so. One day in a warehouse furniture store, my wife and I laid on a $700 foam mattress. For my test it was more comfortable than any spring mattress. Not sure if they're better or just work for me, but I can never go back. I'd say that research is more important than price though. OEM Chinesium is just as bad as eBay Chinesium parts. Sometimes eBay contains gold, sometimes it contains shit nuggets, but doing the research is key. I'd also add that the less safety or reliability critical the part is, the less research and quality matters. Side market LEDs for example are simple and eBay ones match high performance ones. On the other hand, Getting the lowest cost airbags or oil system is probably a bad idea. Agreed. I used to go to the SPCA for low cost vet services, and while it was safe slash clean slash trust for the end I'd still recommend it for those who need low cost services, it was a bare bones facility without the funding, margins to provide extra services for comfort. You also had to drop off and pick up at specific times to prevent crowding since they were so busy which was difficult for people without much work flexibility. I'm now able to pay a premium for my vet and it's completely worth it. They use feelerway, calming pheromone, for all visits. Have tons of wet food options to choose from to keep nervous or energetic cats calm and distracted during visits. Offer services like in-home euthanasia and an in-house lab. Have tons of early drop-off and late pickup options. And the staff seems less harried. Two out of my three cats have vet anxiety and my current vet is so helpful. Edit, a word. And remember, just like any other artist, tattoo artists all have a preferred personal style. Find one whose style suits the tattoo you want, rather than the lowest bidder. A good tattoo artist knows to turn you away if they can't do your piece justice. If they have pictures of a thousand different styles on their wall, Unless they're a grizzled old man with the hands of a surgeon, those pictures are probably stolen. For a long while I only bought cheap bras, discount bras Walmart brand, lower quality retail store typed. Then one day I decided to go buy nicer bras from a store with more designer clothes and name brands. I bought two bras that were $40 a piece and they are some of the most comfortable, durable and soft bras I've owned. They are getting a bit worn out now but I think that's been about 4 years ago. I find that Maiden Form and Warners are decent brands that can be found at Walmart maybe a bit lower quality than the same brands in a nicer store, but for their price they are good and have lasted almost as long as the expensive ones. Pay for the glass not the features that will never be used. That's my mantra. I have some amazing macro lenses that I bought for maybe 10% of what they initially cost because they don't have autofocus. Considering I only use them mounted on a tripod taking photos of stationary items, manual focus is perfectly acceptable. If however the features included are actually useful, by all means go for it. Speed alone is fairly unimportant, as long as it is above say 12 Mbps further increase of available bandwidth does not improve experience. What matters is latency. Modern modems and cheap routers are horrendous at maintaining low latency under load and as a result everything goes to shit when someone on the network is downloading something. The jerk reaction is to try to pay for more bandwidth but that's not the solution in spite of what service providers want you to believe. Instead look for a gateway, router that supports SQM, smart queue management. This will get you much better internet experience and save money by not overpaying for bandwidth you can use and that only indirectly makes things slightly better. For further reading Google Buffer Bloat. Shit gets pricey for me, point of the thread, but I strictly use Patagonia, Carhartt, and whatever the target brand shoes are, Patagonia and Carhartt for some reason fit well, though Patagonia tees stretch way too quickly. Most other collared shirts fit too short for my body size, I'm wide, but going to the next larger size, I'm essentially drowning in it. Target brand shoes for business, business casual have lasted me years and are comfortable, granted I do use custom insoles. Anything that saves you time and effort. 
whether it is short term or long term. I'd rather pay someone to paint my apartment. If I do it myself it will take three times longer. It will not be done that well, and I'm going to be freaking tired. If someone does it for me, I can use that time to do anything else. I can go to a restaurant and eat while they do that. I can sit there and work from my computer, and once it is done, I will not be tired and it'll be a better job. There are hundreds of examples, paying for a taxi instead of a bus, as I'll get there faster, paying extra for a delivery, as I'll get my things faster, etc etc. Great food. Sometimes you get great food cheaply, but sometimes, it's worth splashing out and getting extraordinary food at a higher price. It's about the experience, no matter what food it is. For example, all fried chicken is great. I could probably go to any city and get cheap fried chicken for three pounds and it'd be a decent meal. However, last time I went to London, I went to a really nice fried chicken restaurant, got a nice cocktail, half price for half the hour tbh, and I got a fried chicken main for around pound six ten. It was the biggest, crispiest, juiciest fried chicken I have ever had. Not too greasy but still delicious. Worth every penny, even though I can find yummy chicken for less elsewhere. A high quality guitar. I got back into playing guitar over the last few years, and decided to treat myself to a nice guitar. It was my first time buying a guitar since I was a student, so I had a much higher budget. I couldn't believe the difference, in build quality, feel looks and sound, plus some extra bells and whistles that have only been added to guitars in recent years. It's super comfortable to play, ergonomic, and I can play it for longer than my old guitars. It feels like it just gets out of the way and lets me play. Plus it's incredibly versatile, coil splits and so add a lot of options. Helmets Honestly, after working around dice hockey forever back in college, the amount of parents Adults trying to find discounted and used helmets was crazy. That shit is the only thing between your head and the ground. If you or your kids play any sport, but particularly contact sports, don't cheap out on the helmet part. All the usuals, toilet paper, shoes, pillows, etc. Don't see this a lot though. Pizza. How can you mess pizza up, right? Well, there's a lot of places that do. Now, I do know that a lot of people just buy pizza when they are drunk, for a kid's birthday party, etc. Okay, then I get buying 12 pizzas for $40. But, if you are truly wanting to enjoy pizza, spend that extra money for the good local pizzeria. Really good artist quality tempered paint. The crap they sell at Michael's etc. is snot with a little pigment in it. It's criminal to give that to kids who are interested in art. They'll try to paint something and it will barely tint the paper. They'll look at real art and give up. They'll decide they could never be that good when really it's because they have crappy materials. Tires. Bad. Old tires are a great danger as they're the only part connecting you to the road. I have Michelin's on my daily driver that grip well and do a decent job in the snow for an all season. My last sports car had Continentals and feel like they grip just as well in the wet as in dry. If you live in an area that gets any significant amount of snow, please get some good snow tires, even if your car has a WD. That's not very helpful. Loyalty to what? The company? Because there are plenty of examples of long-term customers who have been denied or dumped as they tried to file a claim. I don't see brand loyalty as power and most things I've seen have said the exact opposite. Opt said they worked in insurance for 22 years. I'm interested in how loyalty is leveraged into power. I would have preferred you add something beneficial to the conversation, such as stating why or how loyalty to an insurance provider can be leveraged into power. In fact, I don't even know if you're agreeing with the part about me stating that I have not seen loyalty translate into power, or if you're saying that the truth is loyalty is power. Sorry, that's a bald-faced lie. With stuff like car insurance or homeowners loyalty does not pay. We were with one insurance company for years for our car insurance and it kept going up. We switched and it was cut by half. There was something on Reddit about it before we tried it explaining why. It's a FKN outrage. I am 61 and have bad knees. 
so that informs this answer. Airplane seats with more legroom. You can often pay $40, $80 to move up to economy plus. Those extra three or so inches make a huge difference on a two or three hour flight. Last year one had the opportunity to upgrade to domestic first class on a four hour flight for $150. That was a no brainer. I think union dues fall into this category. For one thing, the dues are almost always a pittance compared to what the union gains in terms of increased salary level. The only reason people perceive this not to be the case is because the effect is market-wide for that niche. And, of course, a lot of people are selfish and want workers at other companies to unionize, but not to be union themselves, so they can get the increased wages for free. This is similar to the strategy of non-vaxxers who want herd immunity but want others to bear any risks, which, if they exist, are minuscule compared to those of COVID, of the vaccine. Also, a good union brings in due process for the workers. HR is more experienced in firing people than you are at getting fired. If you end up under managerial adversity, chances are your boss has written 20 pips before and knows exactly how to pay for dubious termination. Without a union representative to advocate on your behalf, you're hosed before you even walk in the door. Union workers can still be fired if they deserve it, but a good union gets rid of all the bullshit political firings. No longer can your manager fire you just because he doesn't like you, or because you won't stay late to cover up his mistakes. I don't know why people say they don't want to work at places where it's hard to be fired. Job security, even for those people presumed to be less incompetent, is a good thing. It forces your boss to invest in your career. He can't threaten you, so he has to actually motivate you. All or window seat on a long flight. As an average sized woman, I hated the time when I had to sit between two large men on the middle section of the plane for 19 hours. Imagine being in a claustrophobic situation you can't get out of. I didn't enjoy the flight at all. After that incident, I always pay extra to get tile or window seat. Never cheap out on tires. That extra dollar ten dollar twenty per tire you're saving by cheaping out might seem like a lot up front, but those cheaper tires will wear faster, be noisier, and in certain cases prematurely fail. I got con into some cheap tires back ten years ago. Within two years, three of them had blown the sidewall off. One happened first. Then the other two happened in the same week. It was not an alignment issue. I run nothing but Birelli and Mickey Thompson now. The 10-year warranty appliances, instead of the 5-year warranty ones. The ones that come with the 5-year warranty only have to last 5 years, so they are made with the cheap parts and last 6 years or so. The ones that come with the 10-year warranties have to last those 10 years, so they're made with good quality parts and they loft and last 15 or 20 years. So you spend 1.5x more, maybe, but it lasts 3-4 times as long. So to celebrate me and my soul being together 3 years she took me out to our favorite spare ribs restaurant. She called him them explaining the situation and asked them for ideas. They gave us delicious cocktails with fireworks before and made my portion all you can eat. Normally this isn't an option. When I decided to pay the bill I found out they didn't charge the cocktails and the two extra plates I ate. Tipped 50 euros just for the gesture. First time I ever tipped a restaurant that big. The Fast Pass at Theme Parks I remember being at Canada's Wonderland the summer their new coaster Leviathan had just opened. My wife, sister, and I rode that thing about six times in a half hour time span. The Fast Pass lane was an overpass that walked above the regular line, which was about a 90 minute wait. We were getting some envious eyes that day, and it was worth every extra penny. Good booze. Seriously. There's the well items. Then there's the first rung and the common bar brands. I've found payments no more for food booze not only tastes better but I feel better the next day, even in reasonable amounts. Not sure what is so different, but drinking Curvo feels dirty the same night. Drinking the good stuff isn't risk free, but I definitely feel better the next day at the same amounts. 
good service. I went leaf blower shopping and the place I bought from had the best service. Right from walking into the store till the end, the person helping me had all the answers to my questions and even took me out and showed me how to run it. The other places I looked. The staff seemed like I was bothering them. I may have paid $50 more for the blower and got extra stuff, but I will go back for any lawn-related equipment I need. My grandpa once told me, spend good money on guns. The last thing you need is a jam on the last guy giving you problems. He was a raging drunk and probably killed upwards of 50 people in his life. And he told this to a five-year-old after explaining why he couldn't vote anymore to the same five-year-old. So maybe it's not great advice, I don't know. I haven't had to get in any shootouts lately. <coughs> Mattresses and shoes. For a mattress try out a lot of different types. Do research. And don't skimp out on money for a shitty bed if there is a perfect bed that is affordable. You use it more than almost anything else you'll buy. And a bad mattress can lead to long-lasting problems. A good pillow and nice sheets help too, but the mattress itself will actively change how well or poorly you sleep. As for shoes just make sure it's comfortable for what you are doing. Get a hike or run, test it for that. Need them for work or long periods of standing, make sure they hold up. And again, don't skimp out, saving $50 on shoes won't matter in the long run. Especially if the more expensive shoe actually holds up longer than the cheap one. <coughs> Knowing what you will get. For example, no-name brand coffee, $5. Starbucks coffee, $6. I'm not saying Starbucks coffee is the best. I'm saying it satisfies me. I might be missing on the best coffee ever for a cheaper price. But it also might be dry coffee beans dipped in sink water coffee. If you can't afford a second cup of coffee from somewhere else, the $1 difference is worth paying for. You know what to expect. No risk. No second thoughts. No fuck I should gone with what I know. Peace. The prices are examples I have no clue how much a cup of coffee costs in the US where dollar is the currency. Those are made up numbers to prove a point. Good tools like Snap-on, Tekton, or Tank Tools. Yes, some Harbor Freight stuff is great too. But, for socket tolerances and keeping yourself from rounding off a nut or bolt, great tools keep you from ruining a part that could cost way more than your cheap tools to get drilled out or cut off. I, my stepdad used the cheap cobalt tool set from Lowe's to replace his timing belt on his Acura and accidentally immediately rounded off the bolt for the timing belt tensioner. The motor was so close to the strut tower that using a bolt extractor or welding on a cheap socket wouldn't work. Motor had to be pulled to get the bolt out. A solar backup system for charging phones and whatever you cannot live without if you live in a state where power goes down due to weather. These are about a dollar a watt. 100 watts equals 100 buck 500 watts equals about $500 etc etc solar panels and cords are usually separate if you can't afford that right now you can always get a small inverter for under $20 that fits in the cigarette lighter of your car it lets you charge USB stuff from the battery in the car they are a lifesaver during hurricanes so if you're flying from Europe to Australia or New Zealand you're probably going to do a long flight, followed by another long flight. This, frankly, is basically hell. If you land at Changi, they have showers you can use for like a tenner. Have a nice shower, change your shirt, and undercrackers, socks. It'll make that second flight far more enjoyable. You won't regret it. P.S. If you do ever do that journey you won't ever complain about a Europe to America flight again. It's pretty good training. A good shaver. I spent the extra money for a bronze series 7 and it cut my shaving time in half. Does twice as good a job as my old cheap $30 40 shavers, and it's significantly more comfortable to use. The cheaper ones feel more like they're ripping hair out rather than shaving it. I barely notice this one aside from the vibrations it's making. This is one of those upgrades that I deemed to be near the same level as getting a high quality mattress. I collect figures because I'm a dork, so I'm going to say figures. I have a lot of cool figures, but some of them are bootlegs. They're super fragile. My Spider-Man is cracked in his butt because I use the joints. Get the real thing, 
Also, if you don't like it you can sell it and actually make money. You can't do that with bootlegs. 